In December 2010, the first ever Middle East Vegetarian Congress was held at the Dubai International Exhibition Center, with the public invited to engage in an interactive exploration of the plant-based lifestyle. Organized by the Middle East Veg Group, or MeVeg, supported by the Middle East Natural and Organic Product Expo 2010, and endorsed by the Dubai Health Authority of the United Arab Emirates. The event provided two days of seminars, workshops, and video telecasts with experts from around the world, along with rejuvenating veg cuisine. In addition, City of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates on December 7, 2010, with Lo Yu Nguyen, vegetarian, senior executive of education and outreach of Vegetarian Society, Singapore, who will be showing us how to make healthy raw smoothies. It's good to have this for breakfast because through the night when we sleep, the body detoxifies, okay, okay? the body cleanses itself. And when we wake up in the morning, the body is most absorptive of nutrients. So that's why it's good to eat a high uh, nutrient diet. So it's good to have this for breakfast. And uh, because we are blending, the mouth may not produce enough saliva, or rather the, the, the content may not mix with the saliva enough. So it's good to drink this immediately before it oxidizes, but it's also good to drink it slowly to allow it to mix with the saliva. So these are the samples that, uh, that we're going to see. This is the sour plum. This is the dragon weed. Um, we don't have kale here. So we're, we are replacing kale with spinach. So whichever station is doing um, kale, look for spinach. Okay, chocolate. Okay, um, the knives are sharp, so be careful. If, and uh, you, we just rinse the equipment, so it should be, should, should be okay. This is the layout now. So this table that I'm going to demonstrate on is station one. So when you're at station one, do the, the recipe on number one. So, um, so this is station one, two, five, six is behind. So what we do is you fill the content into the tub and then we blend it with this motor, with this machine here. So right now, I'm going to demonstrate the one sample here. Yeah, I'm supposed to use mangoes because they're most fragrant. But here, I'll make do with something else. Generally, when we blend, we put the softer fruits in first, not the hard uh, nuts and seeds. Because if you put something hard, and when you switch on, it tends to jump. It may be violence. I'm supposed to use mango, but you can see this is an assortment of fruits. Okay. Maybe you help me do it. I just put whatever you tell me. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then we put in the uh, passion fruit. The, the recipe I'm, I'm doing is listed here, and these recipes are laid out on the table, you will see later. But here, here because of the, of the lack of ingredients, I'm not following this anymore. So I'm going by instinct. Yeah, quite okay. Yeah. Alright, thanks. Okay, so that was uh, passion fruit, about, about five or six passion fruits in, in one bowl. This is 20 cashew nuts, 20 almond nuts, so, and then you have uh, rosy berries and flax seeds. Yeah, thanks. Okay, and uh, bananas. Bananas we add in last. Okay, we, we grind it until it's smooth first and then we add the bananas last because bananas tend to oxidize easily so what we do uh, just a bit of ice huh? just a bit maybe like this a bit more a bit more a bit more too much yeah thanks okay a bit of ice and at home i don't use ice because uh, most of the foods are used uh, from the fridge a bit of water
this is a super vendor, okay, and, and that is also another super vendor. Uh, you, you'll hear about it later. You plan long enough for it to be smooth. There's no need to plan too long because uh, it doesn't get finer very much and it tends to heat up, so we want to avoid that. If there's any water you want to add, you add it last. Because if, it's, if you add it with the water too early, if it's too uh, liquid, it doesn't blend very well. How long was that? Just about 10 seconds? With a, with a super blender, right, you don't, we don't need to blend very long. Okay, with an with a ordinary blender, it may take much longer. I'm going to pour into these two plastic cups, and then I need help to pour into the sampling cups. Okay, the more ripe the fruits, the more fragrant it will be. Some people like it sweeter, especially kids. So if you're trying to introduce this to kids, make it sweet. Um, for sweeteners, I use the um, date syrup. So is it sweet enough? Is it? It's a more date, a bit more sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a bit more. Anybody have a sample? Anybody have a sample? Any questions you want to ask? Your nut is not fine. Flaxseed oil and not, it's not fine. Is it okay? You can still digest it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the question is that the flax seeds may not be so fine. The finer, the better, of course. But uh, as long as it's broken, the, the flax seeds has to be broken open. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Can you please tell us? Senior Executive of Education and Outreach of Vegetarian Society, Singapore, who will be showing us how to make healthy raw smoothies. We had a very lively workshop earlier on with uh, about 50 students with Hake. And uh, some of them were over enthusiastic and they used up a lot of the ingredients. <laughs> so we had to make a last minute rush out to buy uh, some more ingredients. So I was very worried that they wouldn't be here on time. Um, so anyway, thanks for coming. So what I'll do is, um, what I'll do is I'm going to explain in detail because earlier in the in the talk I, I did, I was very brief. So now I'm going into a, a bit more detail. Okay, I think you know all this, right? Maybe I don't elaborate too much. Much of these, uh, the of the good stuff in this is about how easy it is to to digest, and the key word is the enzymes. Okay, it's the enzymes that are important. It's, it's the enzyme that breaks up the fruit material so that it is easier to digest. It's the enzyme that makes the fruit ripen. And it's, it's also the enzyme that makes the, the fruit overripe. Okay? The enzyme is the important thing. In uh, Eastern medicine, the, the Chinese physicians, they call it qi. Don't even heard of this. Qi is the life force. I think in, in yoga language, they call it prana. Okay? It's, it's the same thing. And I only recently learned there are something like, like 7 to 10 types of qi. I, I didn't know that. Anymore. So that was new. So anyway, um, food that is life is rich in qi. So that's why we want to preserve that. And qi is also very delicate, very easy to destroy. 47 degrees is all you need to, to destroy most of it. Fruits also have them in the right proportions. I mean, the, the nutrients and the, and the fluids in the right proportion. The minerals and... It, Protein also. Meat, for example, can be too high in protein. Good weight control, high in fiber, you know, all that stuff. Um, in fact, there's no fire used here. 
so it conserves the environment. I explained this uh, before. I said noodles, pasta. A lot of people eat a lot of noodles. We have this fried kway teow. I'll show you a photo of this. The grease is used has to be refined and then it's to be ground. It has to be extruded to the, the noodle form. All this is energy. So that innocent little plate of noodles that we pick is actually very consuming of the earth. Okay, and it contributes to gorging and also I was explaining earlier. Um, because of the lack of nutrients, we tend to crave for more food, because the body is craving for more nutrients. So we tend to eat and we tend to eat even more empty calories. As such, we drain the planet's resources both ways. Cooking, or rather raw food, is known to be able to reverse uh, many diseases. We have known of cases of uh, even diabetes, Medically, diabetes is known to be irreversible, but we know people who have managed to reverse it through a raw diet. Heart disease, I think heart disease and, and cancer is quite common. Meet the reversal is quite common these days. So we, I showed you this earlier. And uh, much of this is preventable. If you combine heart disease and stroke, they are, they're called cardiovascular disease. That is greater than cancer. So in Singapore, well, that is the number one killer. Uh, cancer is number two. Of course, um, to be able to reverse this, these problems, to, to reverse and to, and to prevent, there are many factors. Um, genetic is one of them. Stress is another. But many of the other factors we can't control. If you can't change your genes, it's, it's difficult to avoid stress in our daily life. But diet is something that we can change, something that we can do something about. Okay, it's got all the good stuff. No trans fats, no salt. The, the key point is, is in the antioxidants. That's the stuff that builds a strong immune system, and this is very rich. I have a friend, um, I introduced this diet to her, I say, and she had this only for breakfast, okay? She, she's working now in an office kind of situation. She does this only for breakfast, and her lunch and the dinner is still the usual cook for some. And her antioxidant level overtook mine. Mine is, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, mine was, was 86,000 uh, units. Hers was 88, higher than mine, and she, she did it only for one meal a day. At first, her, her level was much lower than mine, so I don't know how she, she managed to do it. And because, partly because I live in a, in a high stress environment, my work is very stressful, and I don't get enough sleep. So, so I was very fearful that my antioxidant level is, was going to be low, actually. So what I'm saying is that this is one good way to jack up your antioxidant level fast. Okay, we soak the uh, almonds and um, the other nuts and seeds that we use, largely because of the what we call enzyme inhibitors that is present on the on the skin of the nuts. We soak them so that uh, we can remove them. These enzyme inhibitors interfere with our digestion. So if you eat the nuts that are raw, that is dry, uh, you can get the feeling of indigestion. And so it's important to soak them to remove them, and also after soaking them for twelve hours, they bloat up. Um, many of the nutrients actually go up. Like, you see, uh, mung beans, the green beans that we eat, when we sprout them, some of the vitamins actually go up 600%. Okay, so it's the same with, with many other nuts. Because the seeds wants to germinate, so it, it undergoes a lot of chemical reactions uh, within. Uh, this is the, the king of nuts. Almonds is the king of nuts in terms of nutrition. Uh, it's good to have them because they help to replace the high protein that a lot of people need. I think the level of protein is, is it, it comes close to uh, that in wheat. Uh, flax seeds, you see them later. Uh, we also soak them. See, flax seeds are good stuff. I think a lot of people know this. But the problem is, it's also a very hard seed. So if you were to try and chew them with your the, with the, with the teeth, you can never chew that fine. And if you don't chew it, it, it will just go it you just go up. The, you don't benefit from the nutrients. So this is one of the best ways to consume flax seeds by blending them because when you blend them they are super fine and they are easier to absorb they are i think you can buy from the supermarket the, the ground form of uh, flax seeds um there are certain doubts because uh we we fear that when the seed is ground some of the nutrients may oxidize so again we may not benefit goji berries this is this good, good in many things uh, it's well known for being uh, good for eye health this is the one, it's a Belgium study. When fruits are in its peak of ripeness, the antioxidant level is highest. Okay, that's when the, the fruit is also the sweetest, the most fragrant. 
and the bowls are uh, tasty. And this is how it looks like for mangoes. It's not true for some other fruits, let's say uh, apple and oranges, you find the black spots. Generally, if you're unsure if the fruit is, is, is overripe or not, the best way to know is by taste. Taste the fruit. Because if, it, if it's bad, it tastes bad. If, it, if, you, if you find it sweet and it's still very fragrant, it's good. Okay, so taste is the best way to judge. We have got six kinds, six varieties of bananas in Singapore. I don't know how many you have here. Um, some varieties, if you see at this stage, they are, they are gone, they are spoiled. But for this type, we call them the Raja Pisan. I don't know if you've heard of this before. And for, for some varieties like this, this is the best. This is the, uh, the sweetest stage. When I was much younger, I had severe gastric pains. Very severe. I saw many doctors. They give me antacids. Antacids can be in a liquid form and can be in a pill form. I tried both and I couldn't take them because uh, it, it made me nauseous. Every time I took them, I wanted to, to throw up. And then I discovered bananas and that, that saved my life. And it was, it was so much cheaper. It, it tasted so much better. Because banana is a natural antacid. It neutralizes the stomach acids. And I found out that my <clears throat> gastric uh, pains came from my depression. I was very depressed at that part of my life. And banana cured it both ways. Because banana contains serotonin, something that uplifts, something that, that, that relaxes and, and uplifts the mood. So that cured my depression and it also cured the stomach. So I was so happy and uh, that was when I discovered the wonders of bananas. At least, a lot of athletes use this because it provides instant energy. This is a natural sweetener. It's also very rich in many minerals, including iron, magnesium. Okay. Best to avoid white sugar, best to avoid any refined well, material. So, if you need sweeteners, use dates. Yeah, please remove the seeds. Otherwise, you may have a very violent blessing. Molasses, uh, this is a powdered form. Molasses can also come in a liquid form. I think that's more common here. One tablespoon of molasses has more iron than seven eggs. Molasses is actually the, the, the residue of sugar cane juice. Well, what we do to produce uh, white sugar is we concentrate sugar cane juice, let it crystallize, and the, the crystals are the white sugar. And the residue is the, the molasses. That's where the good stuff is. Good for blood production, especially for women. Uh, potassium, magnesium, lots of good stuff. Oh yeah, and by the way, iron. Uh, for plant sources of iron, it's important to, to consume together with vitamin C. Vitamin C increases the absorption of iron by four times. Okay, so it's good to consume uh, molasses, for example. Molasses with, uh, with lime juice or lemon, lemon juice. And that's easiest with a smoothie. These are the Malaysian passion fruit. The, the third one is the best. People would consider this ripe, okay? Uh, but the third one is the best. The fourth one is a bit dangerous. It, it, might, it might have gone. So again, it's best to taste. Taste and you will know whether it's still good or not. I meant to show a, a video of how, how to cut the mango. This is the cross section of the mango. Um, most people cut them like this, then shown in the top figure. And what happens is we end up with about a wastage. This, this uh, corner here. Here and here, they yeah, end up with a lot of wastage, and people don't know what to do with it, with a little bit. So I'm, I'm just suggesting this is nothing important. I'm just suggesting you cut in a hexagonal fashion, in a 45 degree uh, fashion. That's the least wastage. Avocados. Uh, actually, I meant to show the video where you cut because some people don't know you need to cut and cut right in the center. And you twist it, you will twist, and it comes off. I have workshops, and people were like, you know, slicing it. Um, just some final points before I start the, the demo. It's good to have this for breakfast because through the night when we sleep, the body detoxifies. Okay, okay, the body cleanses itself. And when we wake up in the morning, the body is most absorptive of nutrients. So that's why it's good to eat the high uh, nutrient diet. So it's good to have this for breakfast. Since removing meat and dairy from my diet, I can honestly say that I feel more vitally alive. My energy level soared, 
My eyes brightened. My skin, hair, and nails. A little bit more about vegetarian diet、uh, and its benefits. When I went into the the vegetarian diet, my energy level and my mental clarity took a jump. When I went into this、uh, vegetarian diet, it took another jump, a much bigger jump. It、um, it improved my my, my mental performance, my, my physical performance too. Of course, the body needs to adjust itself a little bit in、uh, at first. I think this is a diet that can be adopted by the public. One of the reasons why we are doing this smoothie workshops、uh, to the masses is because I think it's something that everybody should go into because it's not only healthy, it's ideal for the planet. Because the the, the fruitarian diet is the most natural, it provides the best nutrients, and it's something that is to me is I, I call it the, the going home diet because it's really going back to the way we are supposed to be. I, I feel that humans are meant to be fruitarians. If you observe our instincts, if you observe the human instincts, we are drawn to the fruits. For example, in in Chinese, we call it the、uh, xiang jiao. You know, bananas are xiang jiao because it it is xiang to us, but it's not fragrant to a cat. It's not fragrant to to carnivorous animals. We are meant to be fruitarians, humans. And、uh, what about climate change? How urgent do you think climate change is? I think it's more than urgent. I think I think people really need to wake up. People are still very complacent about the way things are happening. It, it's something urgent, and yet people, you know, I, maybe they're overconfident. They are, they are stuck in their daily routine. But really, people need to sit up and listen. That is again why we introduce this、uh, this this smoothie making concept because it's something that people can do. Something is easy to do. People, even young kids, can do. So we are trying to make it mass appealing for that reason. Be- Largely, for my personal reason, to address climate change. Tell us about、uh, your efforts.、Uh, what are ways that you are spreading this message to adopt the fruitarian diet to tackle the climate change issue? At VSS, a director for education and outreach, what we are focusing on schools. We are focusing、uh, a lot of effort on schools because s- students are the future, and also with schools, there's what, what I call this multiplying effect. You know, because students can spread the message. Schools have a certain structure. You know, we can outreach to thousands at a time. So that's why we think、uh, students is a very important audience. Of course, we try to outreach to the public too, but it tends to be slow. With schools, it's much better, and we hope that students can bring the message to the parents, to their friends. So we think is is important. That's one of the main things we are doing for LBSS now. I see. And any messages you would like to share with our global viewers? Um. I think I think people need to take this more seriously. I think people are really too、um, complacent to recognize the changes. I think we are seeing the effects of climate change. You see the flooding in so many countries, the extreme weather conditions in so many countries. We need to reflect. I think we all need to reflect, take this this opportunity, and and see the bigger picture, not just about our personal survival. We need to look at our collective survival as a human species, because we need to act together. I think. That that would be my my message to to people globally. Thanks. In December 2010, the first ever Middle East Vegetarian Congress. Was held at the Dubai International Exhibition Center, with the public invited to engage in an interactive exploration of the plant-based lifestyle.